Hey there guys, Zach here from Embaser and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 14.3.2.8. This build includes a number of features and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 14.3.1.6. So this build includes lots and lots of new features. This is probably the most feature packed build we've had in a while. It includes loads of new features that we're going to dive into right now. So first up is the start menu. Yes, the new start menu experience is here with build 14.3.2.8. It features a hamburger menu on the left hand side, which is houses all of your quick actions or quick access to different areas in the system, which you can customize via the settings app. And not only that, but the all apps list is now here in the forefront of the start menu. So no longer is it hidden under an all apps button. It it's just there straight away ready to access so I can scroll straight down and just open an app if I need to it's just there ready to go very nice indeed not only that but the actual the tablet mode is all has also been updated as well the start screen itself kind of hasn't but if we take a look here the hamburger menu has you can also get your all apps list straight away like that and the all apps list is now uh, stretched out a little bit more no longer is it in that left hand bar it's now on the in the middle of the screen obviously and you can see all of your apps and scroll up and down great for touch users uh, and so is the new start menu for desktop users so you can see here hamburger menu works just like you would expect very very nice indeed let's come out of tablet mode and jump into settings so we can show you the start menu customizations here we are so pretty much it's identical but if we go into choose which which folders appear on start if we turn some of these on you will see they will show up in the hamburger menu like you would expect so much improved start menu experience and start uh, and apps list experience for the start screen uh, some insiders have said they don't like this new start menu but i think that's just because they haven't had the chance to try it yet this is definitely a better start menu although yeah sure the alarms app is there and the alarms app is also on my start screen now but the pinning a tile to the start menu doesn't isn't just for shortcuts it's for information so sure you can have it there you can have it there i don't think that's big of a uh, much of a deal that many insiders are complaining about Either way, I think the new start menu is very, very nice. But that's not the only change in this build. Cortana now works on the lock screen. Oh, hello, Cortana. She heard me, apparently. Um, yeah, th this kind of worked before, but it wasn't enabled by default. It's now got its own option in set Cortana itself, herself. So we see here, let me use Cortana even when my device is locked. So if we actually go ahead and lock the start screen, uh, the phone here. Oh, look, here we go. Tap and say, how much is something? Oh, I didn't see it. So let's just say, hey, Cortana. Oh, well, I accidentally pressed my, <laughs> accidentally pressed my uh, mouse. That's not what I wanted. Uh, lock. Oh, do I just have to tap? No, I'm just, I'm just trying. Right, let's just say the words because I know that works. Hey Cortana. Hey Cortana. <laughs> of course, the system has crashed. Why wouldn't it? Okay. Wow, this is pretty hilarious. Hey, Cortana. I it just doesn't work. I cannot get it to. I'm gonna have to restart my system. I think. Hey, Cortana. Lock my PC. No, of course not. Of course not. So if we actually lock it. Hey Cortana, what's the weather like? <laughs> hey Cortana, what's the weather like today? The forecast shows cloudy skies with a high of 52 and a low of 42. Hooray, it finally worked. But yes, Cortana is now accessible via the lock screen. She also has a nice UI up here. It's giving you examples of what you can say if you want her to, to do it. So say it now. Hey, Cortana, show me my top headlines. Here are today's top headlines. The first headline from Fox News is EMTC mowing lawn after California man passes out. I, right, so there you go. That's that's that. Let's log back into the system. Hopefully things are working properly again. Now, moving on to the next noteworthy change in this build, the file explorer icon, as you can see here, is now white with a hint of yellow, rather than before being an entirely yellow icon. So it's kind of matching the rest of the new Windows 10 apps. And although the file explorer itself hasn't changed, 
the icon has. So that's something to take note of. Um, also, uh, just a noteworthy change, this uh, the file explorer is no longer pinned by default. Now, Microsoft has said that they are trying this out. So because inside us always say we want more room on the start on the taskbar. So instead of making Cortana minimized by default, they decided to uh, remove the file explorer icon instead. You can always pin it back, of course, which is what I did for this video. So to do that, you simply just type file explorer or just file in most cases, right click and pin to taskbar and it's back where it used to be. So by default, no longer pinned, you can pin it back. Microsoft is seeing how this goes and whatever else. So make sure you submit feedback if you do not like that change. Uh, the action center icon has moved from being on the left hand side of the clock to the right hand side on the edge of the, ta uh, the taskbar now and that's because uh, Microsoft wants people to access the action center more easily. Not only that, we can actually test this via going to uh, a website that actually can push HTML uh, web notifications. So the action center itself, let's authorize you. Yes, so show me in five seconds. I'm going to get a notification. And you'll see the action center pop up. Oh, sorry, the icon down in the there you go. It's now I've now got a little icon there saying a one it means I have one notification. If I get another notification, let's show another one and another one and another one. You can see here it's going up and more numbers get involved and stuff. It's pretty much how that works. Very nice indeed. Of course, you can turn it off as you can with most things in Windows. And apparently, you can don't show app icons. Although. It, I don't know what that means. I guess with some apps, if you receive a notification, the actual action center icon will change to that icon just to show you that uh, that app is giving you a notification. Not only that, some more, apparently more improvements to the action center, although the UI seems pretty much the same. I guess the new hero image option is here now, which was on mobile last week. I've also got options here. I can right click. Very nice indeed. Oh, and we can customize. The, uh, the action center now, uh, the quick access area on the action center. If you go here, just like on mobile, I can now move these all about and have a good time. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, another new feature, which is probably the biggest feature, although not for everybody, Ink Workspace is here in this build. Now, I don't have a pen to showcase this feature in action, but I do have a mouse, so I can gag, you know, I guess I can try. Yes, I can use a mouse. And this is what the this is the sketchpad. This is one of the new features with the ink workspace. I can now just pretty much draw or doodle or do anything I want via this sketchpad, which is accessible straight from my taskbar. So this is excellent for tablet users or surface users. Quickly open up the sketchpad. Uh, let me clear. How do I clear this? Uh, that one. No, nope, that's just save. That one. That's copy, I imagine. How do I get rid of? I don't know how. But look, there's a ruler. I can now use things like rulers to have a good time. Look, I can draw against it. Straight line. Another straight line over here. Very nice indeed. I've also got... I can do it as an undo button as well. And there's whatever that is. Lots of <laughs> features. And crop. Wow. This is fantastic. And I can also share with the old Windows 8 style share UI, which is very nice. Let's close that out. I think it crashed actually. Uh, sticky notes. Sticky notes have been updated. No longer are they the Windows 7 style sticky notes that have just been carried over through the years. This is a new sticky note designed for pen input, although it does work with keyboard. So this is a sticky note and I can save them. There's an option down here apparently. Color, I can change the color. Wow, this is really cool. And settings. Uh, disable sending application usage statistics and about is also a version number you can have for sticky notes. Very nice. Copyright 2007, James Newton King. 2007, interesting. So there you go. That's a sticky note. I can have another sticky note. A second sticky note, I can delete them and so on and so forth. And they are always there for you to access whenever you need them. So if I go back into the Ink Workspace, which, oh no, look, it's on the taskbar. And apparently nothing's loading now. That's good start. I think the Ink Workspace crashed. Or the entire system did. It's possible. This build is not stable. I'll put, tell you that much. Even Microsoft says it in their own blog. This build is not a stable build. So do not be installing this on your main machine. I'm gonna have to log out. Also, I mean, I, I know I was just showing this, but I didn't know. I didn't actually say it. Look, if I swipe that up, the wallpaper behind the login kind of gets a little bit blurry and darker and zooms in a bit. Very nice UI touch, I think. Now let's log back into the system because there's more things we haven't spoken about. So if we jump back into settings, you shall see here there's a new Windows Insider program option which is pretty much the same as it was in Windows Update except it now has its own dedicated area which is very, very nice. Not only that, icons. There are now icons for each setting in the settings app. So whenever I pin something to the start, it will now have its own personal icon and the settings app will crash. Of course it will. That's <laughs> Try that again. Let's do notifications, pin to start. 
and it'll crash. Okay, apparently the pinning to start doesn't work in this build. <laughs> but uh, if it did, you'd now get that little icon on the start screen uh, and menu as well, which is very nice. Now, there's also an updated credential slash UAC dialogue UI. So, I don't know how I'm going to be able to activate this without... Uh, hmm, how am I going to do it? I guess I could run as administrator. Let's just run the CMD as an administrator. Come on, really? This shouldn't be this difficult. I know, I will just manually search for it because I know where it is on the start menu. Uh, CMD... I lied, I have no idea. Oh, that's in this in administration. Oh, what's that? No. It's down here. Windows administrative tools. CMD. I'm pretty sure it was. Unless I'm lying. Which I apparently Windows system. What? Where's the cons this oh there it is, it's hidden under that one. And I can't open it. No, what's What? CMD. Nothing. This build is broken. Microsoft, what are you doing? I mean, I'm an insider. I understand, but I'm trying to do a video, guys. Uh, PowerShell. This is great. This is... It, there's nowhere. I can't find it. It's there. Look, it says command prompt, but I can't... Let's pin it to start. No, it's a control panel. Okay, so I can't get the search thing working. I know there's a way to... Search for CMD. Love is awesome. What? <sighs> That's what it looks like. Just look at the picture. I can't I can't figure out a way to get to see if anything running. And that's pretty much all the noteworthy changes for this build. Now, this build is very buggy. I may have already said that a few times because I have said that a few times. I may cut it out before in the final edit. But this build is very buggy. If you're going to install this, make sure it's on a secondary device or make sure you can just you know you can tolerate bugs because everything is going wrong for me today because it's just i what's going on why can't i search for an app Ugh, microsoft well actually this is microsoft does clearly say in there let's read it i'm going to read the blog post it says with the amount of code change in this build there are going to be some rough edges some of which are some of which are called out in the known issues below. If there, if any of those make you uncomfortable, you may want to consider switching to the slow ring and waiting for a later build, which has a bit more stabilization on these new features. So yes, Microsoft does say they made this decision to release these features early because uh, Microsoft, uh, Windows Insider has asked for it and they want to, so they push out features as soon as they can for testing. And as, as a result, more buggy builds, which Microsoft has kind of been saying for a while now will eventually happen. And with this build, it appears to have happened. So make sure you know what you're doing when you're installing this build. There are a lot of known issues here for the PC, uh, at least seven, more than seven. So keep note of that. Yes, that's pretty much all the noteworthy changes in this build. So thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.